Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to Modern Mining. Today, I've got some tips and tricks on how to save power when GPU mining profitability is low. As you guys know, any power that you're spending that is not going into hash rate directly is essentially wasted money and lowering your profitability. So there's a few tips that I personally use to reduce my power consumption when profitability is low. And I'm gonna share those with you guys today. There's about seven of them. We'll start from least significant and get to, at the very end, the biggest factors that can help you save power when GPU mining profits are not the best. Want to buy a new ASIC miner but not sure which one to purchase? Check out today's sponsor, ASICprices.com. Their website offers an intuitive way to research before your ASIC purchase. You can sort by ROI if that's your thing or daily profit. Don't forget to set your electric rate to make sure the results are accurate. Interested in only CASPA ASICs? Switch the algorithm drop down and sort by CASPA only. See one you want? Select it and view a variety of useful information before your purchase. Historical revenue, historical price data, you can even break it down to price per hash for each specific vendor. Though I don't have any ASICs yet, I've been closely watching ASICprices.com to find the perfect buying opportunity. Special thanks to ASIC Prices for sponsoring this video. I'll leave a link down below. First off, let's talk about maximizing the number of cards per rig. This helps one with Hive OS costs. You don't wanna have 10 one card rigs because then you're paying 10 rig fees but it also helps with power costs because I mentioned in a previous video that every motherboard that powers a GPU mining rig has to power the CPU and the RAM, components that don't necessarily increase your actual hash rate. And so if you've got 10 motherboards in your farm, those are all consuming electricity. If you can take those six card rigs and turn them into 12 card rigs, and then all of a sudden you only have five mining rigs, you basically just cut the wattage from five motherboards, five CPUs, and five sticks of RAM, which doesn't sound like a lot, but that can really add up. That could save you 200 watts maybe. The next tip comes down to what voltage are you running your mining rigs at? This right here is a 240 volt circuit. I switched from using a standard house 120 volt circuit and if you didn't know, power supplies, especially server power supplies, run more efficient on 240 volts than 120 volts. And unfortunately, this change was not as significant as I thought it would be. I thought it was gonna be upwards of 5%, but it turned out to really only be about 2%. But that still makes a pretty big difference when you calculate, let's say my farm's using 3000 watts. So, 1% of that is gonna be 30 watts, and then times five, that's 150 watts. So by switching to 240 volts, I basically saved 150 watts power on all of my mining rigs combined. Now, obviously that has a slightly higher overhead cost to actually get the 240 volts installed, but if you're gonna be mining long-term, it really makes sense to make the switch and capitalize on that small efficiency gain because all of these small tips, they really do add up. The next tip to saving power involves monitors. Really, you do not need a monitor plugged into your crypto mining rigs 24 seven, especially not a big boy one like this, because that's just gonna draw an extra 30 watts, 40 watts all the time, and it's not increasing your hash rate any amount at all. So what I do is I have a monitor sitting around, and if I ever need to troubleshoot a rig, I'll just remote into the rig, and if that doesn't work, it can't even boot or something like that, then I have a monitor ready to go that I'll plug in, do my troubleshooting, and then unplug as well. If you want to be able to see what your rigs are doing, you can get a little Raspberry Pi monitor, but even this, I don't leave plugged in anymore, especially when profits are this low, because this takes about, I think it was 10 or 15 watts, and that's super small, maybe not even a dollar savings at the end of the month. I'd have to do the math, but still every amount counts. We're trying to compound this. The next tip that I utilize in my own farm lot is keeping your power supplies as efficient as possible. So for one, this means 
don't power a lot of graphics cards off like a bronze power supply. You wanna go with gold at a minimum or hopefully platinum rated. If you're using server PSUs like the ones behind me, those are generally 94% efficient. But it actually goes further than that. Each power supply is gonna provide power at a different efficiency based on the load of that power supply. So a power supply that's running at 99% is not gonna be very efficient. Same reason that a power supply that's only running at 20% isn't gonna be very efficient. That key region of maximum power supply efficiency is between 50% and 75%. If you keep it in that golden range, that's gonna be the most efficient range for your power supply, and you can save wattage that way as well. For example, if you're gaining three to four to 5% efficiency in that range on a thousand watts of power, that's 50 watts that you're saving right there. The next tip is it might be worth considering turning off your workstation or your gaming PC that's only mining on one graphics card. Like I mentioned earlier, if that all that motherboard wattage is only going to one GPU, even if Hashrate NO says that your 3080 or 3070 is profitable, you need to make sure that you actually take a power meter and get the wattage of the full system because it's very well likely that you are not profitable when you calculate in the motherboard wattage and add that on to your GPU wattage. I know when I checked my 3080 upstairs that it was running right on the line and that's what prompted me to put my 3080 on an actual mining rig and swap a 2070 Super up to my workstation and I just leave that turned off right now because I don't want it generating heat upstairs and it's barely profitable to run. So let's try to save some money on that power bill while profits are so tight. All right, those were the smaller ones. Let's get into the areas where you can really impact your power usage and some really good tricks that I use. You don't wanna miss these. The first one is case fans or rig fans. A lot of people have noticed in my previous videos that none of my case fans are running right now and the reason is it's still somewhat cold outside right now it's only 64 in here because I've got the garage open but what that allows me to do is not run my case fans and if we do some quick math I've got seven here seven here and four there so that's 18 case fans and what I'm gonna do now is plug all these in and let's see how much power draw that adds Right now we're sitting about 3,270 watts and I'll plug all these in and let's see what we're running at. So that brought us up to about 2,308 watts. Anywhere between 40 and 60 watts, turning these fans on increased it that much. So they're really, they're not needed right now when temps are low, I'm only gonna turn these on when it gets really hot outside. But keep in mind that 40 to 60 number is a little bit exaggerated because these are actually reducing the temps of the cards. So if the card temps are lower, then the fans on the cards themselves don't have to run as high. And that sort of balances each other out. But still, I think it's a net positive in power to leave them on. So I normally had these off until temperatures start to rise. And you could also take these off when you're not using them so they're not kind of blocking the exhaust from the GPUs. All right, second to last tip. This one has to do with exhaust fans. As I mentioned before, any wattage that's going into things that are not hash rate is essentially lowering your profits. Obviously, you need to take into account that, I just realized I didn't turn all those fans off. Obviously, you need to take into account that if you let your stuff get too hot and then graphics card breaks and you have to replace it, that's going to basically make all this pointless. But when you don't need the exhaust fan, make sure it's not going faster than it needs to. Me personally, I have this on a smart outlet and I closely monitor my temperatures with this little meter hanging right here. This is a Govi one. I'll have links to that in the smart outlet below. And I'll pop up some of my graphs, but basically right now, I'm only running this exhaust fan for a total of like 50 minutes every single day. And that comes in the middle of the night when the garage is closed and 
I have it set every two hours to come on for 20 minutes. It'll get all this hot air out of here, suck in fresh air, and then it'll run for another two hours, get all the hot air out. Obviously, I'll need to increase how often that exhaust fan is turning on as summer comes around. It may end up that it needs to stay on 24 hours a day, but that's the benefits of doing crypto mining in your garage is that when I'm home, I can leave that garage door open and get natural airflow that I'm not having to spend electricity to generate. So get a temperature sensor and monitor your temps closely and tune your fans so that you're only using them the absolute minimum that you need to and that way you're saving as much wattage as possible. That exhaust fan at high speed I think runs around 150 watts. So only using that for an hour a day is very, very minimal power cost. And last but not least, the most important way to reduce power when profits are low is messing with your overclocks on your mining rigs and getting them as efficient as possible. So let's jump into Hive OS and I'll show you just how much I lowered all my power usage while mining Nexa on these three rigs. I'll show you a before the change the overclocks and the after to see what the power difference looks like. So I mentioned changing your overclocks to be more efficient. Well, let me show you exactly what I mean. Now this will work for all core algorithm coins. It's a little more difficult on Kapow. There's only so much wiggle room really. But for example, if you go to Hashrate NO and look up a 3060 Ti and Nexa for this example, you can see that there's multiple overclock settings here. There's a high level, a medium level and an efficiency level. So not all coins and not all cards are going to have an efficiency overclock in there, but I'll show you the trick that you use and it's basically the same for all core coins. So going into my Hive OS, what we've got right here, if we refresh everything, is power consumption 3,227 watts and Nexa Gigahash is 1.645. Let's pull up a calculator and get our hash per watt calculation for what I'm currently doing. And keep in mind, I'm already running the efficiency settings. So this will be the efficient version. And then we'll change it back to my normal overclocks and see how much power did I save going to the efficiency. So hash per watt, we'll do 1645 divided by 3,227. We're getting about 0 0.509 hash per watt. Now get that out of the way and I'll show you guys how I'm doing this. So we're gonna change all three rigs, but you can see in our flight sheet, the main things you're gonna be changing is your dash dash core clock and your lock core clock. So in general, and this applies to Pyron, Carlson, and basically a lot of these coins that are on Regal Miner, is if you wanna increase efficiency, you're gonna drop this core, this lock core clock value down. Generally, you set this to about 1500, but the lower you set it, the more efficiency you gain, just the less hash rate. And when you drop this down, it allows you to increase your core clock right here. So right here, you can see I'm at 340 on every card besides one, and I'm at 1400. This is the efficient settings. Now I have a different flight sheet will pull up right here which is Nexa Zill coin gen and let's look at how this one compares so this is the not efficient flight sheet the one that I was using last week before I made this change you can see that my core clock values are a lot lower and they're all over the place because of crashes you have to kind of dial in each card read the error message if it says GPU 2 crash because of overclocks then you're gonna drop GPU2 down. So that's why some cards are all the way at 250. But in general, these are all much lower than the 340 on the efficient flight sheet. And our lock core clock is set to 1470 on all of these cards. So let's go ahead and run this one and switch the flight sheet on our two other rigs as well. And let's see how much more power we're drawing. Obviously it's gonna increase your hash rate a little bit but not as much as it's gonna increase your watts. All right, so we've got those all updated to the higher power normal overclocks. Let's calculate our hash per watt now. So with efficient settings, we were at 0.51 basically. 
Now we're going to do 1705 divided by 3370. And you can see, if I make this a little bigger, we gained, we lost a little bit of efficiency there. And this is the more efficient settings. So what you could do is you could even drop that 1400 number even lower, but generally it starts to get to the point where you're only gaining very minimal efficiency gains and losing a decent amount of hash rate. So around the 1400 core clock, lock core clock is about the lowest you wanna go. So I hope you guys like this video. Just trying to get you as many tips as possible to conserve electricity while profits are down. But keep mining, keep stacking those coins. Things are gonna turn around and I'll see you guys next time. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Peace.